Candles look best if you use them to occupy a bare space, or to complement a more center-focused piece, or even to counterbalance opposing detail. Keep in mind that candles tend to be interesting to the eye with all those textures and the movement, and they cram a lot of detail into a small space. So if you saturate a certain area, it can go from attention holding to attention hogging really quick. Next, think about how vertical your candles will be. If they're placed on a stationary surface, they'll burn more evenly and the flames will be nearly vertical themselves. By contrast, if they are placed on a backpack of a sprinting assault marine, for example, they will be more slanted while the flames will drag behind. In this case, the tip of the flame should point in the opposite direction of the host's movement. And lastly, if there is cloth or paper on the model, make sure the flames react similarly to them to secure that idea of unified motion. And once you have an idea of where and how many candles you'll need, you'll need to gather your stems. These will act as the body of the candle and can be made from all sorts of things. I've used paper clips, sprues, casting supports, 3D printed supports, spear shafts, toothpicks, and really, they all work fine. You'll be covering them up anyways. Cut these to various lengths. Candles are individualistic. Even if you were to light a group of them all at once, they'd still each burn and melt differently. It's also more interesting to mix different thicknesses in there, especially if you have a large group. This breaks up the clump and invites the eye to keep moving and examine the rest of the model instead of wallowing in a big patch of the same thing. Get a Dremel to match your stem size and drill some careful holes into the host. This helps to secure the stem so you can press on them later with the green stuff. If your host doesn't have the thickness to drill, you can use a stiff glue, but remember not to press as hard when you add the details. If the stems and the host are both plastic, you could use a plastic glue if that's your speed. The way it melts and bonds the material together can be useful in creating a melting candle effect, but can easily get out of hand and can make a mess, so use at your own risk. Drop your candles into the holes and try out different combinations of heights and thicknesses. Swap them around and take a look at how they blend into the rest of the mini. Do they draw your interest? Do they encourage your eye to examine and move on? Do they balance out details on the other side of the mini? Do they accent a more prominent object? And once you're happy with your placement, it's time to roll the green. Now we're not going to be sculpting on this miniature. I'll do that uh, on the side at another time. Because these candles are really small and I want to make sure you guys are able to really see what I'm doing. So we will be sculpting on this instead. And hopefully you'll be able to get a better view of everything. These candles will be much bigger. And the principles are gonna be totally the same. So everything I do here, do to your miniatures, okay? So um, here I have laid out a couple of sizes and um, you can see just as I talked about in the introduction that these are different heights different sizes and they're even spaced uh, at an asymmetrical uh, fashion right so this one is the outlier it's a little bit further away this uh, taller thicker one is going to be the most prominent and then they're gonna have two smaller ones close to this not the same distance is this to this, but closer. So it's very asymmetrical um, and it keeps everything more interesting. If these were all the same height and spaced evenly, I mean, unless that's really your purpose, um, it just looks more interesting to kind of uh, randomize them like this. Um, and I have not glued this one in yet because I want to decide later on the height. And I also want to be able to access this for the uh, tutorial so you guys can really see it. And if this cluster is in front of this one, it's going to be harder to get to it. Okay, so I'm actually going to remove this, and we're going to be sculpting on these two first. Start off with a piece like that. And what you're going to do first is just apply it around the base of uh, your candle. And get a soft brush, don't get a hard brush. soft brush like this and just fix it around the base. This will cover up any glue and the hole that you drilled to secure the candle. So just do around like that. And it does not need to look 
nice and smooth and even. You can have some flat areas that you do that with. You can have some tucked in areas. Just make it look a little bit uneven. Then take the tip, the corner of your brush, you're gonna stab it in and then pull up and blend it into the stem. Okay. Okay, do the same thing with the other one. Just take a just take a little log here of green stuff. You're going to set it at the bottom. It does not matter if you're nice and clean, it does not need to be precise. Okay, so I got a little bit from this one on that one. No problem. You just blend it. You can make some crevices. Okay. And just blend it up and into the stem. Okay. That's good enough for now. So now, you can take a little blob. Let's see if the lighting is better, if it's gray. Like that. Take kind of a, a piece like, like that, and just stick it on top, okay? Take the flat of your brush, you're going to press it down, just kind of flatten it. Then take the corner, just like we did before, and start to drag it down, make your little troughs, and here, here's where we're going to do the wax drippings. This is where we're going to start to do it, okay? What you can do is, see how this is an edge like that? What you can do is really accentuate that by turning that into the drip. So you're gonna really smooth on this side, use the flat to kind of blend it up, and then don't blend this line out. Okay, you're gonna leave that. Okay, go somewhere else, do something else. And you're going to flatten that out. And this right here could be a, this right here could be a lip of the wax. So you could make this look like this is a, a heavy drip. Just draw your lines back up into it. Okay. And just kind of make it a little bit random. Okay, and if there's some areas that don't look right, just blend them in, just like that. Let's do the same thing for the big one. And if it's a taller candle and a bigger candle, obviously you want your piece to be bigger, and you can do more with that, okay? I'm sick of the my brush hitting the camera, so I literally broke it off just now. That's why there's paint flakes all over. So now it's shorter. Okay. Okay, see how I kind of just pulled some green stuff from over here? And now I've got a nice a nice dripping right there. Sometimes 
things like that just happen and you need to encourage it. So now we're going to take that little drop and we're going to just kind of keep running it down the down the uh, stem. Okay. Let's keep running this side down. And just keep working your way all the way around it. Okay. And you can, if you want, you can also get bigger layers by just adding more to the base. So candles that are shorter tend to have more wax built up at the bottom because they're short because they've melted and built up that base, right? So if this guy is gonna be shorter, let's give him a little bit more drippings, right? You don't really wanna do the bottom, uh, add to the bottom after you've already done the top though because then you're just working backwards and this top stuff is supposed to overlap the bottom stuff. So we'll show you how you fix that. If you find that, oh, that candle doesn't have enough with it. You can also build in a little spot here and then draw a line up the stem to make it look like it's all flowed into one. And when you get to the bottom, you can also use your pokies and you can make sure they're either spit on or wet or oiled, and you can draw lines like this as well. See what I'm saying? So you can kind of rough the edges. If you find that you have added a base after you've already done the top and it doesn't look quite right, you can always add another layer to the top. Like this. And sometimes it can look good if you have multiple layers, okay? So you're gonna add another one there, press it flat, start to run the edge. Sometimes doing a angle like that looks good and then wax built up here, wax built up around the side. Kind of make this a droopy lip like that. Okay, I don't like how much lip there is there, so what we're gonna do is bring that down. Keep bumping the camera. How short could I really make this brush? So you're getting the idea, right? Now you can also add little droplets, okay? So if you wanna add thin little uh, lines of little beads of, of wax, what you'll do is you're gonna make a teardrop. You're gonna make a teardrop like that. And then you're gonna carefully, and this is uh, always a little sketch, but <clears throat> you can place this mid stem. So say that you want to add one right here. Like that. Don't touch the bottom of that teardrop because wax, when it builds up, the bottom of it is going to be fatter and more defined, but the top is going to be blended in to the stem. So blend the tip of the drop 
but leave the bottom of the drop as it is. Okay, and you just keep going back through and refine it and refine it and run the lines together and and get the get your drip patterns going. And that's basically it for the stem. Now for the flame. For the flame, you're going to do as if you were going to do a teardrop, you know, another drip, but instead, and it's much easier to do this with fresh, fresh green stuff, so don't wait very long to do the flames, okay? <clears throat> and ideally, you want to use the same batch of green stuff that you use for the wax, you want to use for the flame so that it sticks together really nice. So you just get a little teardrop, stick it on there. And then you can get a knife with some oil on it, get the tip, and just press the base in like that. Press the base in like that. Tuck it around it. Okay. Let that sit for a bit so that the green stuff has a chance to grab onto itself. And then you can kind of start easing it into place, bumping it up like that, okay? Don't be too aggressive with it just yet. You gotta give it a chance to grab, okay? Then what you can do, lick your fingertips, or you can use your tweezers if you want, but say that our motion is headed this way, right, our wind, motion of our motion of our character whatever that's going to be oops see I did not wait long enough so I'm going to pet, pat it back down and let that sit okay while that one's sitting let's add another one to the small one And if we were doing a torch, same principle, but the flames we would do in multiple parts. So we would do uh, lots of lots of layers. Um, you can also get little pieces of, um, if it's a large torch, you could get little pieces of plastic card, right? And use them for wicks or, you know, you could have this sticking out and then put a flame on the tip of it. Um, usually the scale that we're working, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. That would be a real big old wick. But while you're waiting to, uh, while you're waiting for the flame to kind of stick and gain its base, you can rework some of these droplets. This one I'm going to kind of press down a bit more. Make this sort of saggy, like maybe it's melting on this side. If the flame were to come out this way more, for whatever reason... It would get hotter on this side, so it would melt more on this side. So you'd want to start building up the wax down here, right? If uh, if you have a lot of flames together, pay attention to where they would be. Because more flame means more heat, and that would mean more melted wax, right? So, um, let's grab this one. I can tell it's not quite strong enough. It's not quite sticking, so let's... And sometimes you actually just have to kind of get into it like I did on this side and just stab in there, press down to really just manhandle. You gotta, you gotta sometimes just force it and you can build up that teardrop shape later. Then just kind of grab it, turn it, pinch the tip. If this one is coming out this way, this one should be going the same way. Okay. Just like that. All right. There you go. There's candles. If this one were, um, if I were going to keep going with this, I would add a little bit more wax here. But this is the tallest one, which means it's probably the newest candle. So it doesn't need a whole lot at the bottom. This one being burned down to a stub means there would be lots more. And if this were to be placed on, say, the back of a, a dreadnought or whatever, um, you could have drippings start to come down, you know, run down the arm. I've actually done 
large candles that burn down so far that there's a huge puddle of wax and there's just tons of it pooled down, like it drips down onto the arm or something like that. Um, if you do that on like a statue, right, that isn't going to be moving a whole lot, you could have tons of drippings um, pooling at the feet of the statue where all the wax is dripped down. So it's pretty uh, inventive. As far as uh, adding interest, candles are great to add interest to a miniature. That's why they're so popular. So I'm going to be doing this one. This is a commission. So this uh, piece here will not be given out as a prize. It's got to go to the client that paid for it. But in exchange, I have another prize um, for the six-month patrons that I will be showing um, on the uh, news feed. And I'll be doing that drawing and sending it out. Uh, thanks so much, guys, for watching. And uh, I hope that was helpful for you. Just keep working it. Work the little, uh, the little candles the same way. Um, and, and keep it uh, asymmetrical. And I think you'll, you'll be happy with the result. So I'm going to be sculpting a little bit more in, uh, in this video. Uh, but that is all the instruction for now. Thanks so much, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.